Hi, this is Aaron Booker from Varber.tv. I'm here with Dave Sobel. Dave, tell us about the biggest announcement you think happening at WPC this year. So this year at WPC, Microsoft has announced a new product in the small business server line. It's small business server codename Aurora, and it's a new product introduction that actually is smaller than the traditional SBS installation, but larger than the foundation server model that, that has been used before. It's actually a little bit larger also than the home server model. The idea behind it is, is that if for a perfect first server for a customer, who doesn't necessarily need on-premise exchange or SharePoint, but needs a place to put their line of business application, yet still have the integrated security of Active Directory, and additionally would need some client backups. It'll be that first server to get them started. Sounds to me like from an MSP's perspective, this is a really great solution because now you've got you know, a, a recurring model, you've got an ease of management because you've got, that, that's the problem with home servers, I mean you could kind of piece this stuff together in the past but you didn't have the Active Directory integration. Well, exactly. Actually, I'm, I'm really excited as a managed services provider to be talking about a product like this because what it does is it, it has those security and, and management features that you look for in Windows Server. Additionally, it has an administration console that allows third parties to integrate their off-premise pieces. So you can actually integrate to the cloud solutions that you're using for your other pieces. You know, be that security solutions or, you know, disk management solutions or, or your cloud storage or essentially anything that a cloud provider might want to integrate to the console, linking the on-premise piece to the cloud piece with a single console. It's a very compelling offering for small to, you know, smaller customers that SBS may not be the right solution for and may be too much server. Well, it's kind of funny because I know certainly traditionally, and, and Exchange has come a long way, of course, but in the past I always thought of, uh, of Exchange as a, as a um, annuity for, the, for a service provider because, you know, there's always something that you have to tweak a little bit with Exchange, things go wrong, but with a cloud-based model where you've got those mailboxes in the cloud, it really does reduce the cost for the, for the partner and for the end user, so it makes a really nice managed services offering. Well, it really does, and what's neat about this is that it actually focuses on integration because the, the biggest hurdle right now when you're looking at cloud solutions is what to do with the piece that requires on-premise. Right. <laughs> that, 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 that oftentimes there's a line of business application that really does require that on-premise piece. How do you solve that where you want the two to integrate? And there hasn't been a way to approach that until now. Microsoft actually, as part of the release, announced an SDK, their software development kit, to allow people to write to the Aurora platform to integrate those external offerings with the on-premise piece. So it's an open architecture to let those cloud providers add in to the on-premise piece. I'm, I'm really excited about that because I think that's what's going to get a lot of movement through the channel is those solution providers and their partners that latch on to that. I also know that, uh, so it seems to me, I'm really excited about the hybrid model. Okay, I've been excited for a while. I feel like that's the real power of what's starting to happen in the cloud for the smallest, for the small businesses. It's too expensive to have all your data off-site. And you want to have that control over some of your data, your financials and so on, your line of business application. You just don't get the performance that you need. But to have that local storage and that local backup too, right? So there's all those, those up to 25 PCs are getting backed up locally onto your server and then you're, you're, you're getting the advantage of the cloud management and cloud access for your mail and then, and then you're, but then you're getting the, and the cost advantages too in the manageability. It seems like a really great solution. So you're getting a number of features it sounds like. It is and, 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 and you're exactly right to highlight the cloud, the backup piece that the clients can be backed up much the same way that Windows Home Server offers the ability for up to 10. The Aurora platform allows you to back up up to 25. So and again with an integrated Active Directory model so that you can actually you know manage the security of the environment as well as the backups of the on-premise piece. It, it, it's really a, a compelling solution. It's a great story. So what does a partner do that wants to start learning about Aurora? What do they do next? So there's a couple of things. The, the first thing is to sign up for the public beta that's coming shortly and that's available on the Microsoft site. 
obviously the code isn't in hand right now and so you might think that there's nothing to do at this point but actually I think this this is the part where you take the time that you would be using to learn the technical code itself to focus on the business aspect of this because what's really as we've talked about the compelling part of Aurora is the integration piece so in order to use that effectively you need to reach out to your partners and work with them to understand their integration requirements and what they're going to be offering on the Aurora platform, work with them and any piece that you need for on the SDK. So download and work with the SDK and encourage your partners to say, I want to deploy Aurora in my environment. This is the way that I'm building my business around it. You will be a more go-to partner if you've integrated with the platform. So that working with them to understand how that you're going to go to market together is a really good thing to be doing while we're working toward getting to beta. So Dave, one question that I've got is RWW. Is RWW included in Aurora? And to follow up on that, if you don't have a cloud services partner now, say for hosted exchange, is this the time that you really need to start looking for one? So it's a great question. So first off, yes, it does include remote web access is included in the Aurora platform. And so my, my thinking is yes. I mean, if you're not, it, Aurora is not designed to solve email. So if you don't have a way of delivering an email solution, this is definitely the time to do it if you're looking at using this platform because it's definitely going to be a need that you have. I, I know that some small shops currently just use POP3 email, you know, even some, if this is truly a first server, or might be coming from an AOL or Hotmail or something, it's time for them to have domain name based email and therefore an exchange sure is the best way to go, it's the best platform in the world. Oh, absolutely, and there's a number of different ways that it can be delivered, and that's actually the intention of Aurora, is that SBS assumes an on-premise install, but that's not the only way that that, can be, that solution can be delivered now. This all opens up the market into those that an on-premise solution may not make the most sense. What's the site to go to to start to learn more about Aurora, the URL for it? So the URL that you're going to want to go to to, to get the next steps is www.microsoft.com slash SBS.